Good morning, Mets fans, and happy Friday, and welcome to Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and yes, that is snow. Hoorah! Uh, I, I, I've reached a point where I just, I give up uh, on, on whatever this, this winter wants to be and continue to be and just doesn't want to go away. And um, The good news, though is that the Mets defeated the Nationals yesterday, spoiling their home opener. And uh, it, quite frankly, it was a glorious day from top to bottom. I'm going to talk about it on this morning's show. Weather notwithstanding, uh, yesterday's game was, was really delightful to watch. Um, I've made no bones about the fact that I really despise the Nationals. I think they're just a garbage, garbage franchise with garbage fans and just garbage. Um, <laughs> but uh, watching them lose wa was just terrific. Um, a small sample size. Before I say what I'm about to say, I understand small sample size. But watching the Nationals react to the way the game unfolded yesterday and listening to the stadium in Washington react to the way the game unfolded yesterday, it took me back to the Labor Day weekend series in 2015 where the Mets eliminated, basically eliminated the Nationals by sweeping them uh, in a three-game set. Um, that's what this felt like to me. Now, again, I know it's one game, right? It's, we're six games into the season. Uh, a lot of a lot of games to play. I, I know, I understand, but I'm just telling you the vibe that I got from the the game on on uh, yesterday on Thursday was overwhelmingly positive, um, and, and it was really a top to bottom overwhelmingly positive outcome. Um, Jacob Degrom put forth a very gutty performance. He did not have his best stuff for the second straight start. Yet, despite that, he maintains his MLB record leading or holding or whatever, the lowest ever ERA in the history of Major League Baseball, um, up to a certain number of innings pitched, of course, um, during day games. DeGrom has a sub-2 ERA in his, in his uh, four-year career uh, during day games. That's pretty impressive. And yesterday, he kept that uh, right where it needs to be, under 2. Uh, he did allow two runs, one of them unearned, and uh, he really battled for the entire game, uh, especially in the in the uh, I think it was the fifth inning when uh, the Nats loaded the bases with nobody out, and he got out of the jam, and uh, you know, there was some luck in that because Howie Kendrick hit a bullet that just happened to be hit right at Jose Reyes at shortstop, but. Um, you know, DeGrom battled through that a, a very similarly to the way he battled in Game 5 of the 2015 NLDS. So that's my second throwback to the 2015 season in uh, in five short minutes. But, um, you know, the bottom line from the pitching side, in addition to DeGrom being uh, being really, really good, we got, uh, we got to see um, Robert Gazelman continue to excel out of the bullpen. Um, Seth Lugo closed it out, continuing to excel out of the bullpen. And for his second consecutive dominant performance, Hanzo Robles. Now this is against the Nationals. This is not against the Phillies, so you can't say it's not the it's it's the talent um, that he faced in, in against the Phillies. Why he looked so dominant? Um, maybe this is a new Hansel Robles. I don't know. Uh, whatever. I'm not going to complain. I'm still holding my breath every time I see him. But man, he looked really good yesterday too. So pitching, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. On the other side of the ball, um, the offense started uh, almost right out of the gate. Uh, Steven Strasburg ended up balking in the first run. Um, Anthony Rendon provided the Nationals offense. I want to talk about him in a second. Um, this is going to go back to the pitching thing that we were just chatting about. But um, the, Mets, the Mets bats really came alive yesterday in clutch situations, which was so great to see. Um, three home runs yesterday, the first one by Ioannis Cespedes, his third of the season, of the young season. Um, the second one, of course, by Michael Conforto, making his long-awaited return to the lineup, um, like six weeks before anyone thought we would have seen him. And what does he do in his return to the lineup? He slams an opposite field home run. Um, it, it was awesome to see Conforto put the Mets up, up in front 4-2. Uh, 
And then the uh, the nail in the coffin, the proverbial nail in the coffin, was Jay Bruce's Grand Slam, which was a no doubter. Um, and uh, you know, I I can't I I can't stop smiling about what happened yesterday because it was just so great. But but I mentioned Anthony Rendon, and I want to talk a little bit about him before we wrap up today. So um, over the last two seasons or so, um, I think Anthony Rendon has has claimed the top spot. Uh, on the Mets killer list, um, if for no other reason than he had that 10 RBI game against them last April, I think it's about time that a Mets pitcher—I don't care who it is—but I suspect it would be Noah Syndergaard. But it's time for a Mets pitcher to throw up and in at this guy, or put one in, the ba- in his back. You know, throw one at his letters. I, I, I'm sorry, but he has gotten so unbelievably comfortable in the batter's box. He's, it's the reason he's able to push balls to the opposite field so easily. It's why he got that first hit, because he's able, able to cover the plate. Because he's not scared of anyone throwing inside. It's time that someone throws inside to him. He needs to get knocked down, or uh, as I've coined it earlier this season, he needs to get Alcides escobar And I want that to happen to Anthony Rendon before the end of this series. A message needs to be sent that this is our plate, not yours. The pitching staff needs to get back to that. I commented on Facebook yesterday, do you think Bob Gibson or Nolan Ryan would let a batter like Rendon continue to do damage to the same team? Absolutely not. Um, I don't know that it would have to happen more than twice before one of those two guys would throw the ball up and in uh, and knock him down. It needs to happen. It's baseball. Deal with it. But other than the Rendon thing, again, overwhelmingly positive from yesterday. The Mets are off today. Um... (laughs) It, as you can see, it is still snowing, uh, and the Mets are very likely to be off tomorrow. Um, sadly, as is my uh, and our seven-line outing, postponed to September. That's a bummer, but um, I just hope they can get the game in because I would really like to uh, really like to keep this momentum going and uh, take it to the national, really take it to the Nationals this season. So. Uh, off to a good start. We'll be back. Uh, I will be back on Monday to recap the weekend series, whether it be one game or two. I believe Sunday is an ESPN game, so that'll be fun. Uh, it will coincide with WrestleMania, which uh, which will also be fun. So I'm not going to talk about WrestleMania, but I will talk about uh, I will talk about the Mets series with the Nats over the weekend. So uh, until then, um, I thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Mister Underscore Met, and as always. Let's go Mets.